Okay, so as a scientist, right, you might want to study various biological processes, phenomena that happen within cells at a bench top, right? So you might have to create some of these aqueous solutions or reproduce them at the bench synthetically. And it's easy to do this. We make buffers all the time as scientists. For example, I've had to section rodent brain and I want to keep that rodent brain alive because I want to record electrical signals from that brain tissue. One way to keep it alive is to bathe it in the same fluid that the tissue is bathe, bathed in when it's still inside the organism. So your brain and your spinal cord are both bathed in uh, cerebrospinal fluid. We can make that at the bench. We just need to know exactly uh, what components are part of that fluid, which ions, which molecules we need, and what concentration of those do we need. So in carrying out these experiments and making these solutions essentially synthetically, we use mass to calculate the number of solute molecules in an aqueous solution. On the next slide, I'm going to take you through some of the key points that we need to understand to be able to calculate, all right, I need a certain concentration of solute, how do I measure it in the laboratory uh, appropriately so I get the right concentration in my buffer or whatever uh, particular media I'm making. The first thing we need to understand is what molecular mass is. Molecular mass is going to be the sum of all masses of atoms in one particular molecule. So just like to get the estimate for the mass of an atom of an element, we took all the parts of the atom and the masses of those parts, protons, neutrons, technically electrons even though when we approximate we ignore the electrons. We can add all those together and we can calculate the atomic mass. Kind of the same thing for molecular mass. But instead now, you are taking the mass of all the atoms and cells in a molecule, adding those all up together, and you get the mass of that particular molecule. If we were to take water, for example, molecular formula for water is H2O. Each hydrogen atom weighs about one Dalton. We have two of those, so that's a total of two Daltons for the hydrogens. And the water molecule itself is about 16 Daltons. So we add 2 plus 16, we get 18 mass of one molecule of water is about 18 Daltons, an approximation. Okay, a couple of other things. So the number of molecules um, are usually measured in moles. It's very difficult, albeit probably impossible, to measure a single molecule of a substance, and it's likely not very useful in the lab anyway. We want to measure these molecules in greater quantity. So a unit was defined by Avogadro called Avogadro's number, and he defined a mole to be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. One mole has 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. All right, the nice thing is that Avogadro's number and the unit Dalton were defined in such a way, we can do the math um, uh, to, to do this comparison as well, but the two units were defined in such a way that, you know, one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the to, to the 23 molecules for Avogadro's number, and 6.02 times 10 to the 23 Daltons is equal to 1 gram. So this makes calculating measurements of various molecules super easy. For example, if we know that one molecule of sucrose weighs 342 Daltons, if we wanted to measure one mole of sucrose, we automatically know, based on the way that Avogadro's number and the unit Dalton were defined, that one mole of sucrose, which contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules, is going to weigh 342 grams. So if we know the weight of one molecule in Dalton's, we automatically know the weight of one mole of that substance in grams. It's going to be the same thing. 342, either Dalton's for the molecule, or grams for the mole. In lab, when we make these artificial buffers, for example, we usually use molar concentration to be able to identify, okay, how much of a particular uh, solute do I have in my solution per volume. So molarity, or M, capital M, is defined as the number of moles of solute per liter of solution. So for example, if I wanted a one molar solution of sucrose, I would take 342 grams of sucrose, dissolve that in a little bit of water, and then bring that water all the way up once the sucrose is dissolved to one liter. 
I would then know that I have one mole of sucrose in that one liter of solution.